So in this video, I want to introduce you to different ways of writing down an inequality. So there are three that you really need to be aware of. So we're going to go all the way back to a number line. Okay. So here's our number line. And the way that we can identify whether points are included or not is using a solid or hollow dot. So a hollow dot means that we are not including 3. The solid dot in means that we are including 5. And so we're talking about any value that is greater than 3, but less than or equal to 5. Now, we have a way of writing that down as an inequality, which would be 3 is less than x, or x is greater than 3, which is less than or equal to 5. OK, now, please note that when we write down an inequality like that, um, that the direction of the inequalities are going the same way, uh, that we've got less than, less than, OK? We wouldn't write this as 5 is greater than or equal to x is greater than 3. Now, although that there's nothing really wrong with this, except that, well, when you draw a number line, you don't put 5 to the left of 3, do you? We always go from the left to the right in ascending order. So we don't really want to write it like that. Uh, we also, whenever you're writing inequalities like this, don't, please don't get kind of like mixed up with things like this. There shouldn't be any kind of muddling of the direction of your inequalities. So if you've got something written like this, you'll always have it as less than, less than. OK, so we don't want that either. Because, I mean, this doesn't really make much sense saying that x is greater than 3 and it's greater than or equal to 5. OK, so it's a little bit of a muddle. So this is the first way that we want to write down an answer. So this is the most basic way and the way that you will be most uh, used to, I expect. OK, now. That's our first way. Now, the second way is using something called set notation. OK, so set notation is a formal way of writing exactly the same bit of information down. But as I say, writing it in as formal way as possible. Now, set notation is always using curly brackets, OK? So it does take you a little while to get used to drawing a curly bracket like that. But that's how we draw it. Um, and what we're going to say is that x belongs to the real numbers, OK? So just to kind of be clear on that and to pick up that at this stage, the when I say x and this weird E shape, and then this strange capitalised R, OK? This symbol means belongs to, or in, OK? And this symbol here represents the real numbers. OK? So um, the real numbers, just as kind of like uh, a very quick uh, pick up here. If you're not doing further maths, OK, and you're just doing A-level maths, then in all likelihood, any number that you can think of is a real number. So these would include um, the natural numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the counting numbers. OK, uh, it would include the integers. So minus 5, minus 6, 0. OK, so all the negative uh, natural numbers as well. Then you'd also include all fractions, like uh, a half, a third, minus five-sevenths. So they're the rational numbers. Then you've got um, the uh, irrational numbers to be included as well. So root 2, pi, e, all these numbers, and they're all real numbers. So everything that you can kind of think of would be considered under a bigger banner of the real numbers. OK, once you go on further mass, you'll deal with complex numbers, which is extending it even further. OK, and if you're interested, you can always watch the videos that I've got on that. So I'm really going a bit aside here. So this is what it means. X is a real number. OK, and then we say we use a colon to represent such that. OK, so 
this colon means such that. So x belongs to the real numbers such that x is greater than 3 but less than or equal to 5. And then we close the curly bracket. And this is set notation representing precisely the same stuff, that, or precisely, precisely the same information that this is saying. OK, so you'll look at it for the first time and go, well, why, why would you include all this extra stuff? It's, as I say, it's a more formal way of writing this down. OK, because if I say that, do you mean that x is a real number or does, is x um, a natural number, for example? Can it only be a natural number? Is, are the only values 4 and 5? for example. So this is a little bit loose in its definition, whereas this is much more explicit, going it's a real number, it's any number greater than 3 but less than or equal to 5. OK, so x belongs to the real numbers such that x is greater than 3 but less than or equal to 5. That's set notation. Now the third type is interval notation. Now, um, the exam board that uh, focuses more on inf interval notation than any other is AQA. Okay? Um, and the way the interval notation works um, is that you say, well, x belongs to, so this is identical notation to what we have here. And then we say we open up a curved bracket when the value is not included. So 3 is not included. So that goes in a curved bracket. But 5 is included, and that is then going in a square bracket. So we use a curved bracket for not included, and a square bracket for is included. OK? So then you have your inequality, set notation, and interval notation. OK? So let's take a look at another example. So let's say we've got our number line. And this time, let's do uh, minus 3 down that way. OK, let's do that. So from here, it's from minus 3, including minus 3, and all the way down to as far as you can go. OK, well, obviously, it doesn't stop. OK, you keep going. So as an inequality, we would just write down that x is less than minus 3, or less than or equal to minus 3, sorry, okay, because we're including the minus 3. For set notation, we would be saying that x belongs to the real numbers such that x is less than or equal to minus 3. And for interval notation, now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting, OK, now, as it keeps on going on forever and ever and ever, you are going towards negative infinity. Now, we, in interval notation, we will have to use a curved bracket because infinity is not a value that you can reach okay, or, or include. And so we're going to say negative infinity up to minus 3, then square bracket. OK? So, that is what in the inequality, set notation, and interval notation would look like for that situation. Now, let's change it a little bit. And let's say we've also got um, from 6 and up. OK? So, 6 not included and upwards. So, we would be saying that x can be less than or equal to minus 3 or x is greater than 6. OK, and that identifies the two regions. Now, for set notation, just writing or um, isn't good enough. I mean, we can uh, go back and bring in some notation from uh, Venn diagrams here. OK, so at GCSE, um, plus also on this course as well, if you look up Venn diagrams, if I'd said A or B or both, 
Okay, so all of that for a Venn diagram, this is identified by saying a union B. So the U shape here is the union. Now you might be going, oh, that's ringing a bell with like the N shape as well, the intersection. The intersection is just that bit there, okay? But the union is A or B or both. So we can use the union here and say we've got the union where x is a real number such that x is greater than 6. Now the reason why we can use that union there to mean this or this, because it also includes that or both bit, right? But yes, it's also meaning or both, but there are no values that are both less than or equal to minus 3 and x is greater than 6. But So effectively, um, these are mutually exclusive events. The two circles would not overlap. Okay, so that or, or both bit, you know, isn't really making much difference or any difference. Now, for interval notation, we also use the union curved bracket for six because we're not including it and going up to positive infinity. Okay, and so this introduces to you how we can represent a region uh, via an inequality, set notation, or interval notation. And on top of that, okay, notice how one region, one inequality, two regions, two inequalities. And if you had three regions, you go to three inequalities, four regions, four inequalities, okay? And so the number of regions that you have tells you how many separate pieces you would need to describe it.